For the last few weeks, I've been wearing the Ringcon Generation 2. Now, many of you have been asking me to review this smart ring, and today we'll take an initial look at the Ringcon Generation 2. I've been enjoying wearing this ring. It looks quite good, honestly. It's relatively thin, especially if we compare it to an Aura ring, for instance. It's slightly thinner, at least, and I really enjoy the look and the feel of this ring, but honestly, most of these smart rings, whether it be, for instance, the Aura ring, ring the ultra human ring air or the ring con gen 2 actually most of them look more or less the same they're not that different though as you can see out of the three the ring con on the left here is the thinnest so in terms of design i quite like it the fact that there's no subscription is good for instance the aura ring has a monthly subscription with it however as we actually saw in my ultra human ring air review even though there's also no subscription with the ultra human ring air the data quality is just not as good as the aura rings data quality now aura has been in the smart ring game for a very long time so they're sort of ahead of their competitors still in some ways but i'd be very curious to see if the ring con 2 at least comes close to the performance of the aura ring because similar to the ultra human ring air it also doesn't have a subscription fee which makes it quite a bit more attractive than that monthly fee you have to pay with the aura ring now today will be a very initial review it's sort of an excuse for me to try and play around with the data and also figure out how to get the data out from this device because i could find very few third-party app integrations i would have loved to have been able to connect to strava for instance for the workouts to get the heart rate data out or to some other service that allows you to get the raw data out now i did see it has a data export function in the app so we're gonna try and look at that at least and of course i connected it to apple health so there we should be able to get out some data so together we're gonna find out what the data quality is like for the Rincon gen 2 by the way for those of you who don't know me my name is rob and i'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis and my reviews are focused on data and data quality and trying to do some experiments to find out which devices have the most reliable heart rate tracking sleep stage tracking heart rate variability tracking all these things now in this video i'll only try to focus on the sleep stage tracking of the ring con gen 2 and also the heart rate tracking if possible but i'm a bit afraid it will be very difficult to get that data out but let's take a look oh and by the way in a couple of months maybe two or three i'll do a much more complete review this is also sort of a trial run for me to find out how to best review a device like this which doesn't have all the normal data export options so i might have to figure out some workarounds so let's get to it but to do that we well, actually need to go to my office or workout room or studio back there so let's get to it so we're at my desk and i actually wanted to start with the heart rate tracking performance and there is actually this export functionality here in the app and it just completed so let's take a look at that data and see if that gives us what we want because i couldn't connect to strava the next option would be to go for apple health However, I already noticed an issue there. So let's take a look. So here we have the export that I got. So there's activity, sleep and vital things. <laughs> Even though I'm also not a native English speaker, I think this is a spelling mistake right here, but correct me if I'm wrong. Let's take a look at the data. So it's really only the summary per day we get here. So we cannot really use this in any meaningful way. What about the sleep stages? These are also basically per day so we cannot use this data for the heart rate tracking let's next take a look at apple health but there i actually already saw an issue and yes indeed so here we have apple health the problem is that this data is only per 10 minutes or so so we cannot check the heart rate tracking performance with this honestly the only thing i can realistically do at least for now is to put the raw data side by side take a screenshot of the app and see if it at least somewhat overlaps with the reference device so as a reference i use the polar h10 ecg chest strap which can actually measure my heart rate using ecg so the electrical activity of the heart that's the most reliable way of measuring heart rate so i'll try to do that now give me a second and i'll be right back with you and if we put those results side by side right here for the Rincon gen 2 with the reference device on the left right here and the Rincon gen 2 on the right this just doesn't look very good now i took indoor cycling here as an example since this is generally one of the easier exercises for a device to track and this already looks quite bad now it doesn't really give you a graph of your heart rate connected by lines 
But you can see here that my lowest heart rate started at about 79 or so, and it never got above a maximum of about 148 right here in the middle somewhere. And the actual patterns of my heart rate through different intervals was very different. And my maximum heart rate is closer to 165 BPM. But those values here on the right, according to the Rincon 2, don't reflect at all what my actual heart rate was like. Now I'll try and see if I can find some way to get to the raw data. I was actually in contact with Rincon. I bought this ring myself, but they said they would also send me a second ring in a different color so I can actually do more testing. Also look at the consistency between the two rings to see if they actually give similar results. But I need to wait for them to actually send me that device. And when I'm in contact with them, I'll also ask them for data export. So maybe I can do a better analysis. As a first indication, the heart rate tracking during exercise just doesn't look very good. I also understand that heart rate tracking during exercise is probably not the main reason you're using this device. So let's next take a look at the sleep stage tracking performance. And the way we'll do that is by comparing the sleep stages as measured by the Rincon Gen 2 to the ZMAX EEG headband, which is a scientific device specifically designed for sleep stage tracking. So we're gonna compare the sleep stages measured by that device over about five or six nights instead of the Rincon Gen 2. So this is an initial review. For my full review, I hope to have at least 15 to maybe even 30 nights of data. But let's take a look. Quick interruption, this video doesn't have any sponsors, but there's still ways you can help this channel. The quickest and easiest way to initially help the channel is by liking this video, subscribing and commenting. All of those would be great. Now, if you want to more directly support the channel, you can become a channel member, which is like Patreon on YouTube, which gives you early access to a bunch of my videos like this one. Or if you buy anything at all on Amazon, but first click on my affiliate link, you will get me a small commission and you support the channel at the same time without it costing you any extra. Or if you're into running, but you wanna get better and faster, I would recommend the Runner app, which is the app I use myself for getting my running plans completely personalized and having a live coach during my runs. So this is Runner right here. Runner provides really the best plans out there. They're personalized to you, whether your goal is a 5K, 10K, half marathon, full marathon, they have it all. I'm using it as a cyclist to now become better at running. And if you want the best deal possible with a two week free trial, you can use my affiliate link up here or down here. Thanks for considering and let's get back to the data. And here we have those results. This is the average over a total of six nights where on top we have the sleep stages as detected by the ZMAX EG headband, so the reference, and on the left the sleep stages according to the Rincon Gen 2. And each column here is normalized to 100%, meaning that we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the reference was detected as each sleep stage by the Rincon Gen 2. So right here, for instance, we can see that about 60% of what was deep sleep according to the reference device was also detected as deep sleep by the Rincon Gen 2. Light sleep had a similar agreement also at about 60%. Both of these are okay-ish, but definitely not great. However, REM sleep agreement is just super poor. Only 18% of what the reference device said was REM sleep was also detected as REM sleep by the Rincon Gen 2. This is just very, very poor agreement. More than two thirds of what was REM sleep according to the reference device was instead predicted as being light sleep by the Rincon Gen 2. So REM sleep detection, at least on me, just appears to be very unreliable. Now, as always, we'll ignore this column with awake time right here, just because the ZMAX tends to detect a lot of awake moments that aren't really awake moments. This has to do with something in the scoring algorithm, so we're gonna ignore that. We're only gonna focus on the actual sleep stages, so deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep. And for that, the Rincon Gen 2 just isn't doing very well. It's even doing worse than Garmin, for instance. And we can actually put these results into the context of many other devices I've tested in the past. And that's displayed in this overview right here. And this overview shows a lot of the devices I've tested in the past. So along the horizontal axis, we have the average agreement over the individual sleep stages. And along the vertical axis, we have the agreement of the worst sleep stage. That means the further to the top right the device is, the better is its agreement with the reference device. And where's the ring con gen 2? It's all the way down here. So it's really not doing very well. It's really one of the worst performing devices out there, especially because the REM sleep agreement was so poor, it's super low along this axis right here. So it's really not a device I would recommend for sleep stage tracking. 
it's a lot worse even than Garmin, for instance, which I always say have mediocre sleep stage tracking. Now, the best sleep stage trackers out there are, for instance, the Aura Ring, the Apple Watch in different variants, the Nuko or Sleep 2 app, and the 8 Sleep Pod. Now, as regular viewers will know, the 8 Sleep Pod is my favorite sleep improvement device because it can actively cool and heat each side of the bed independently. So if you're a hot sleeper, especially on these hot summer days and you wanna cool down and get a good night's sleep, the 8 Sleep Pod can actively cool down the surface of the mattress. So it's sort of a mattress cover and blanket, not something you actually wear on your body. So it actively cools and heats each side independently so your partner can sleep at a different temperature if he or she wants to. And I really love this device. And in addition, it has great sleep stage tracking, but it also tracks your heart rate, heart rate variability without wearing anything on your body. If you want to improve your sleep potentially, I recommend the 8 Sleep Pod, but it's not cheap. It's actually quite expensive. With my affiliate link up here or down here, you'll get the best discount possible, but it will still not be cheap. So if you just care about sleep stage tracking and not cooling the bed or heating the bed, then an Apple Watch is a much cheaper alternative. So is, for instance, the Aura Ring, but then there's that subscription. But we can see the big difference between the performance of the Aura Ring up here and the Ring on Gen 2 down here. And also the Nukua or Sleep 2 app isn't bad at all. And then in the second tier of devices, we have, for instance, the Whoop strap, which is my favorite overall device for both sports and health and sleep, and also different Pixel and Google devices. So Fitbit is owned by Google, so all Fitbit products and Google products use the exact same sleep stage tracking algorithm, and they all perform about the same. So they're in sort of the second tier of devices. So those are my recommendations. Again, the Aura Ring is outperforming all the other rings I've tested. Also, for instance, the Amazfit Helio Ring didn't do quite as well. Same goes for the Ultra Human Air Ring. And where's the Samsung Galaxy Ring? It's right here. So all of them are doing about the same. So at the moment, honestly, it doesn't appear that for the sleep stage tracking, Aura Ring has a real competitor on its hands. But I will do a future more in-depth test, also trying to look in more detail at the heart rate during exercise, but potentially also other metrics during the night. I still have to see what is possible with the ring on Gen 2. So let's quickly get to my overall conclusion. So that was a really quick but data-driven initial review of the ring on Gen 2. But what is my overall conclusion of this device? Is it completely useless? Well, probably not. Some of the basic metrics like resting heart rate during the night are probably still pretty decent. However, it's just clear that the Aura Ring is still doing a lot better than the Ring on Gen 2. I was hoping it would be good, but at least based on this initial review, it doesn't seem like the Ring on Gen 2 can really compete with the Aura Ring, at least not on basic things like tracking your sleep stages. Maybe the very, very basic things, like I said, resting heart rate or average heart rate variability could still be reliable, but other more complex metrics, like especially your sleep stages that require a lot of money and time to train a good algorithm for just aren't reliable yet on the ring on Gen 2. I think this is generally a problem for many companies that are just starting out in sort of the health and fitness sphere. They try to get all the metrics that the other companies also have because they cannot be left behind. But in the end, the quality of some of these more complex metrics just isn't quite as good because they just don't have the reference data or the training data to create a model that can actually predict these sleep stages. I'm hoping it will get better over time. They just really need to invest time and money into getting it right. So for now, I really cannot recommend the Ring on Gen 2 if you want accurate sleep stage tracking or heart rate tracking during exercise. Now for heart rate tracking during exercise, there is this big caveat there that I could only look at a few examples and I couldn't do a quantitative analysis, only a qualitative quick look. So hopefully when I get in contact with Ringcon, they will send me my raw data and I'll collect a lot more of it. And then we can do a more quantitative analysis of the heart rate tracking during exercise. But at a first glance, that also didn't look very good. Now, I know this all sounds very pessimistic, but I hope that with time it will get better and better and we'll have proper Aura Ring competitors on the market. It just doesn't seem like any of the devices I've tested so far that are ring based are true competitors for Aura. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Ring Con Gen 2, you might like this video on the Aura Ring or this video on the 8 Sleep Pod.